We're talking to Terry Stripling. Hi, Terry. How are Hello you this there. morning? And you're with Fast Track. No, Actually, no, excuse me. You're with 10, uh, 1080 Education. That's right. 1080 and the education. product is Fast Track Radio Control RC, right? It's 1080 Education is the company, and 1080 Education is a mixture of engineers and educators. So I'm a chemical engineer. Good for you. Thank Man, you you're much. the smartest person in the whole building. That's right. Georgia Tech grad. Yeehaw. Go. Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. And Fast Track Racing Challenges, and Fast Track Challenges is the product that we brought to the TCEA. We okay. do a lot of other things, mind bugs, a lot of things elementary stuff, but this is the high-tech uh, STEM program, so we brought it here. Okay, can you kind of tell us what it's about? Right, Fast Track Challenges is something we've been doing in classrooms for about 12 years. Uh -huh. uh, in the last couple of years, upon request from the people who are using it, the students who are using it, we've made it into a competition league. So a lot of first robotics teams, Lego robotics teams, best robotics teams are using the Fast Track Challenges before and after the big competition period. Okay. A lot of people like it as well because it brings in mathematics, whereas robotics does. I'm a huge fan of robotics, uh, but it's not very math intensive. And so we all know math is what opens or closes the door to a lot of careers. In your math future. is the language of science. So. Math is the language of science. I think that says it, it says that across our website even. Really? Yes. See? <laughs> <laughs> we need to tell some people in my district that. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway, tell, so tell us, uh, show us what you got. Sure. Actually, let's come around the side of the okay. table here. Fast Track Challenges, Fast Track Racing Challenges, let me turn the screen on, is a competition league for some, it's physics applied lessons for some, okay. it is extended math lessons. So with this car right here, we can okay. teach you algebra, algebra 2, we can teach you calculus, pre-calculus. So get the X and Y off of the billboard, the blackboard, and bring it into life with three or six. Right, so you're actually making the learning real for that's the right. students. That's, that's a, right. And that's very important, I think. That's a, and you're, you're providing actually an emotional attachment to the learning as well. And it's right. a, that's yeah. where long-term learning takes place. Now, we work with students who are low-end students, like safe school, healthy students, where we just really need to get them into school. And then we work with high-end calculus students or, or future engineers. So it works for both sides of the You point. mean low-end students can actually do math and science? They and can when you engage them, when you give oh, them a mistake. Get out of here. It's true. Man, it's it's true. Just, Call just, me. I'll give you my email if you want to complain. Whatever. It's just amazing, man. So the competition piece of this is that the students lay out a competition track. There are several like this. Okay. Which is in itself a math lesson. Our students no longer build decks with their grandfather, so we don't know how to use the Pythagorean theorem mm -hmm. and build a coordinate system. And Grandpa doesn't even out. build decks Grandpa anymore. Grandpa doesn't anymore. You're right. They hire uh, those, uh, those big box stores to do it. That's right. So the key then is to race engineer your car just like professional teams do uh -huh. to win this track. Decisions like what gear ratio do you want on this track? What spring setting? Pick up points. You can change the tire angle on these cars, so caster, camber, toe in, toe out. Just uh, like they would really do in real racing. Uh, you can actually, you know, this, yeah. this is a four-wheel drive car. You can do almost everything with this that you can do on a real car. Uh -huh. And it makes a huge difference, enormous difference in your performance. So one of the ways you would make those decisions is to go out there. So my wife would probably want to change my tires every once in a while <laughs> improve my performance. Set up an experiment, which we tell you how to do, of course. Collect your own data maybe using whatever technology you have available, measurement probes, maybe just a stopwatch. Uh -huh. And then you create something like this, what we as engineers call a math model. You, it's a graph. And for the kids, it's just what they need to do to figure out the right gear set. So to me, I'm an engineer. These graphs tell stories to me. You know, we say that graphs give you x-ray vision because you can figure out things with graphs and math that most people cannot figure out. And this this is actually bringing the graphs to life. Absolutely. This is actually because they're visualizing where those numbers came from. Instead of just actually just solving a problem yes. and, and plotting on a graph, they're actually racing a car, solving the problem, right. putting the... Instead okay. of a plotting, finding graph, this is a thinking, meaning graph. Amazing. Yeah, that's Amazing. one of the, where I was giving professional development on Monday in Baltimore, and that was one of the teachers said, so I like that. I'm going to use it. <laughs> so, to me, this graph tells me exactly where, in only three trials, what the best or one of the best gear ratios is going to be. So this is one of the general ways you solve the problem. Okay. But for a lot of students... They're very interested in the aerodynamics side of things. So okay. you can see this rotating thing. Um, as an engineer, I used SolidWorks in industry, and so we brought it into our educational program. 
So aerodynamics is a huge part of this because these cars go 35, 40 miles an hour. Yeah, I saw you uh, racing <laughs> some back and forth. You were like aiming at people. That's kind of cool. It's that's kind your, of fun. It's, yeah, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of watch, fun to watch these old people try to get out of the way. Yeah, well, we're, we're scaled around here. We would never really hurt them. Uh, so you can re decrease your drive time by 10% just by adding a wing to this car body. By 30% by getting rid of this body and building your own. Now, some people, if you don't have any technology tools, you build it with foam core and glue. If you do, you use a CNC machine or a 3D printer, whatever you have available. Uh, so this is where the SolidWorks comes in. Just like an engineer, you design it in SolidWorks, you test it in Cosmos Flowworks. That's a part of SolidWorks. It's a right. virtual wind tunnel. Design, test, redesign. Once you find one that works, then you build it. Cool. So it brings in for a lot of people whatever it is they're interested in. We have actually automotive classes using it because they can build a full-size car, but they can never drive in and see what the changes that they make to the car, actually what effect those have. So, so how, are, how are schools around the country using it? Are they using it as an add-on program, like an after-school thing? Is it built into a regular curriculum? How, how is it being used? It's a variety of ways because we're a resource team. So we, like I said, have been doing this for 12 years in the classroom. So. Every school wants to use it a little differently. For a lot of people, it's an after-school club, just like the robotics club. So they do a robotics right now. When they ship that thing off and they're done with that, they start picking this up again. So I think this would be a way cool after-school program. It is. To get it's kids. also a summer camp. We're partnering with the 4-H and the Society of Manufacturing Engineers to pilot 4-H camps this summer across the country. It's a grade level? Grade level. You start with this one in seventh grade. Uh -huh. Now, this car over here, if you can see this little white car, we start them thinking about problem solving as early as third grade using this car. Okay. So we start them on the right path, a love of math, a love of problem solving, very early age. We can use this car all the way up through uh, high school calculus. Yeah, but that one loses all the races. It does lose the races. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so, so nobody wants that one in high school calculus. No, they don't. By seventh grade, we really do figure them, you know, we start to transition right. to this. So our hybrid camp is a mixture of the two. Get the principles with this one because it's easy to drive, and then really get the complicated, fun problems with this. Oh, that's a really exciting product. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Thank uh, you. If, if somebody's interested in, in can, purchasing or looking at it, how do they get a hold of you? Our website is www.1080education.com. That's T-E-N-8-0, okay. education.com. Wait, just like this. Hold on. 1080education.com. Mm -hmm. All right. There we go. And uh, 1-800 or 1-866-MATH-TO-GO. Okay. M-A-T-H-TO-GO is the phone number. And your uh, company provides professional development Absolutely. for teachers. That's it's actually not how we started. We started out as a professional development team. We do elementary thing, a program called Mind Bugs, Square Foot Science, just a lot of low-tech conceptual science and math. We started out as a professional development team, and in our years doing it, we've seen problem after problem repeated in schools, and we create solutions with the teachers and students for those problems. That's great. Hey, Terry, thanks for talking to us That's this great. morning. Thank really you appreciate very much. it. Say hi to everybody in El Paso, Texas. Hi, El Paso. <laughs> Maybe we'll see you out there in a while. Thanks very much. Go Georgia Tech. tech. Go yeah. Tech. Yeah. Go, yeah. Yellow, Go jackets. Yellow Jackets. Yeah.